Well, hello everybody and welcome to my show. My name is Jason DaCosta and this is Consistent Preterism. Thank you for joining me today. I feel like my intro there is kind of like uh, David Muir with uh, Nightly News or whatever. Uh, this is Consistent Preterism. And then we go to the reporters around the world and we inter- interview them about Christianity and other religious stuff. Um, but anyway, hope everybody's doing well out there. Today I'm going to be yapping. I'm going to get right to the yap. Um, And I want to yap a bit about Isaiah 49. Now, I've done many teachings and audios on Isaiah 49. If you scroll back through the videos that I have on my channel, I would guess you'll find at least five or six of them that are titled with Isaiah 49, um, centered around that. And you'll see sort of progression if you started in, you know, the beginning and worked your way forward. You'll see progression on Isaiah 49. You'll see that I've come to um, a pretty solid conclusion on Isaiah 49, in my opinion. Um, And I did that because I've dug and dug and dug, and I have uh, basically worked my way to answering what Isaiah 49 is actually about. And I worked my way there uh, by kind of looking at what the story says and um, looking at other details that we find in the Old Testament. Um, sorry about my keys. I have a bunch of keys on that damn thing, and it just jingles and jangles uh, whenever I hit a pothole. So, anyway, um, so you can find plenty of content on it. But I'm always uh, thinking about Isaiah 49 because it's one of those things where I know, with absolute certainty, from the core of my cores, that Isaiah 49 is not to be read the way that most wannabe Israelites read it today. Um, they think that it's sort of saying two things, right? It's talking about Israel, God gathering Israel, and then also being a light to nations, right? Um, When in fact, my opinion is that it's a unique literary way of laying out or stating the same thing. Right. Um, What do I mean by that? Well, the light that was going out to the nations was going out to the nations for a purpose. Right. We have to remember that. And we also have to be very careful with the word Gentile because it's not always as clear cut as you may think. We're going to go over that here in a minute. But my opinion is that the light that was going out to the nations was for a purpose. And the purpose is defined all over the pages of Isaiah, including Isaiah 49 and what it says around that passage. You see, people kind of like to pluck a passage out of its context and say, hey, look, this is about us because it's got the trigger word Gentile in it. Well, if you read the context and the surrounding passages, you'll see that it's actually about the house of Israel pretty much 99.99999999% of the time. So we have to be diligent to hold that context to its true uh, form. We can't let it slide off into something that we want it to be. Um, But Isaiah 49 and other portions of Isaiah speak about the same thing, right? They speak about this glorious return to Zion, this return to the city where the walls will be rebuilt, In the last chapters of Isaiah, the prophet speaks of it as a new heaven, new earth, um, where we see that the people will be, you know, rejoicing again and celebrating in the streets and everything. And this was their hope. This was their goal. This was what they talked about, whether they were looking forward to it or maybe looking back on it. Can't really be certain, but um, this is clearly what they envisioned happening. And it was a glorious restoration and regathering and rebuilding of uh, the literal city of Jerusalem after all that it had went through and um, they would come back from Babylon and all the nations where God had driven them. And this was sort of what they had hoped for. Um, And it's a key part of their, you know, their tradition, their history, their uh, stories, their legends, if you will. So we have to remember that. 
okay? So, but what's this Isaiah 49 like to the Gentiles? Well, if you look in other places of Isaiah, you'll see the exact same thing being talked about, right? The light to the Gentiles. Now, before we go any further, we have to kind of look at this word Gentile here. We have to. And we have to kind of get it in its proper context again, because a lot of people aren't really sure exactly what this word means or how it can be used. And so they just automatically assume that it means uh, it, it's a class of people, right? A Gentile is a class of people, um, and we should look at that word like it every time, right? Well, the word is goy, G-O-Y. And I did some research, and of course I already knew this, but I wrote it down so that I could really explain this to you before we get into Isaiah 49. The word goy in the Bible is used... Gosh, uh, I don't have the exact total. I just have it broken down. Let's see if I can do it real quick in my head. That's four, that's 540, 11. About 550 times the word goy is translated in our Bible. Okay? And would you know that the number one usage or the number one way that the word goy is translated... Oh, hold on, I almost just hit someone. Um... The number one way that the word goy is translated in there is nation, okay? Think about that, nation, okay? Now, 374 times out of the 550 times, the word goy is translated as nation. That's huge, right? That's the strong majority, probably two thirds, almost. Is two-thirds of the times that the word goy is used in the Bible, the Bible translates it as simply nation. Isaiah 49, light to the Gentiles, is the word goy. So was God going to be a light to the Gentiles? Or perhaps this would be better translated as nation, where God would be a light to the nation, so that his salvation reached the ends of the earth. Right? Because again... The focus on the in these chapters is on Israel and her salvation, right? You're going to see from other places in Isaiah that Isaiah speaks of this banner that was being set up for the nations for the purpose of gathering Israel from them, right? Gathering Israel from them. Now, if Isaiah 11 says that the banner was going to be set up, we'll talk about banner in a second, and the banner was going to the nations for the purpose of gathering Israel, then why is the light to the nations or the light to the nation, anything different, right? If a, if a banner is going out to call them, a banner to the goy, right? Why is the light to the goy any different? If we know the banner to the goy is for the purpose of gathering Israel, which I'll show here in a second, then we must consider that the light to the goy was also for the purpose of gathering Israel. Okay, moving on with goy. It's used 142 times, or translated, I should say, 142 times to heathen. It's translated only 30 times to Gentile, and it's translated 11 times to people in the Bible. So the, the predominant usage of the word or the translation of the word goy in the Bible is for nation. It just, just means nation or nations. Then heathen comes in at 142 times. And then look at Gentile, only 30 times out of 550. So less than 10%, maybe 7-8% of the time, the word goy is translated Gentile. Now, I don't know about you, but who's making the call here, right? Who's determining if a word should be translated as Gentile or nation, right? Because think about Gen Isaiah 49 and how big of an impact that would have. Right? I'm going to read it both ways. I will also give you as a light to the nation that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. A light to the nation. Now, if you think about Jesus in Matthew 24, what did he say? He said, we'll go to the ends of the earth, right? He, he sent them to the ends of the earth with this good news gospel for this mission, which was to gather the sheep, gather the elect. Hmm, pretty interesting, right? Kind of works perfectly. 
Um, and then if we read it in the way that people like it, or they want it to say, it says that you should be my, I'm sorry, I will give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Okay. Um, I'd like, I like nation a lot better because it fits within the context of everything else that we see clearly, like Isaiah 11, which is exactly the same event. Right, so we're going to get into it here, but I just wanted to let people know, and this is straight from the lexicon, according to the lexicon, goy, the word goy, is used in the Bible usually for these three, pe these three groups. Non-Israelite people, descendants of Abraham, and Israelites. Right? Think about that. The lexicon itself admits that the word goy in the Bible is used three ways. It's used for non-Israelite people, it's used for descendants of Abraham, and it's used for Israelites. So right there, folks, right plain as day, the lexicon admits that goy, what everybody just jumps automatically to assume it means pagans or true non-Israelites, um, actually means Israelites. <laughs> it means Israelites many times in the Bible. And they, they arrive at that because of, obviously, context kind of forces you to arrive there. You can't can't think it means anything else when it's talking about the nation. <laughs> uh, you know, Jesus died for the nation, not only for those, you know, in Judea, but those those who are scattered abroad, you know, stuff like that. It's like, who's the nation? Well, obviously it's Israel. So anyway, um, just some things to think about. So then Isaiah 49, why is it written that way? Well, my opinion is it's just a literary, uh, unique way of, of, you know, it's almost like poetry. It's it's sort of like a, a, a thought, you know, to preserve the ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the nation or to the nations that you shall be my salvation to the ends of the earth. You know, like it's a it's a poetic way of saying something. And the Bible does this very often. Now, let's just back that up with a little proof, right? So in Isaiah chapter 11, we see the prophet speaking of the exact same thing that he was speaking of in chapter 49. Isaiah in chapter 11 says this, he says, He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So look at that. In one flowing sentence, we have everything. Instead of two broken up sentences in Isaiah 49, in Isaiah 11, we have the banner being set up. And if you look up banner, it's ensign, or in other words, like, a guide or a light home or, you know, something home, something to call them home. And this is, you know, all over the Old Testament pages about bringing Israel home. That, that's just a theme that you find everywhere. So he's setting up a banner or an ensign or he's, he's calling the Israelites home. And that banner, that ensign is going to gather them, gather the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So in Isaiah 11, we see the purpose of that banner. We see the purpose of that calling, that light, that, that banner, that guide, that message to come home, right? It was to gather together Israel. Well, we see the exact same thing in Isaiah 49. He will be a light to the nations that his salvation would reach the ends of the earth. Salvation was relevant to Israel. That, that's what was going on. He was saving Israel, gathering her in, restoring her. And so the light to the nations was simply to guide them home. And we have other speakings of this in Isaiah about the darkness. He would reach those in darkness. He would call those out of darkness. What do you think the light to the nations is? He's calling his people out of darkness. It's, a, it's just a restoration story. That's all it is. Look at what else it says in Isaiah 11. It says, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will set again his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, from Elam and Shinar, from Hamath, and the islands of the sea. Well, Isaiah 49. Let's go over there and see what it says. It says, uh, For he who has mercy on them will lead them. Again, who's the them? <laughs> it's got to be a certain people. He will lead them, even by the springs of water he will guide them. I will make each of my mountains a road, and my highways shall be elevated. 
Surely these shall come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. So again, what's this saying? Well, it's saying that he's going to have mercy on them and he's going to cause the highways to be elevated. In other words, he's going to help them come home. His salvation was going to reach the ends of the earth. The highways and byways would be elevated. Surely they shall come from afar, for the Lord has comforted his people. His people are only always one people in this. Okay? So again, clear symmetry. And I kind of like how Isaiah 11 talks about gathering the Israelites again a second time um, from all these places, right? Right? And from the islands of the sea, well, what comes to mind is what? Paul kind of venturing out to these little remote islands or these little places. It kind of fits, right? It kind of fits. Um, it actually really fits. Uh, anyway, another th thing that we find in Isaiah 11 is this. It says, in, in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people. Then it says, for the Gentiles the word is goy, shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. Now, again, for the Gentiles shall seek him? Well, Isaiah 11 is all about the Israelites. It's all about gathering Israel from the nations. Right? Yeah, it uses the word goy many times, but it's talking about the nations, where they were. Of course it's going to use goy. Of course the salvation is going to the nations, because that's where they were. So then why is this saying... For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place be glorious. The word is goy, right? Remember what we said goy was used as? Nation. It can be used as people. The majority of the time it's used as nation, right? So it could be saying, For the nation, the nation shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. It could be saying, For the people shall seek him, and his resting place will be glorious. Right? I mean, why is it using the word Gentile here? <laughs> it doesn't fit in the context. Look at look at chapter 49 again. And remember, we just saw the banner again. This this banner is, is coming. It, it's standing as a banner for the people. It's calling them out. Right? Why, why would... We, we know from earlier in chapter 11 what the banner was for. It says, He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. So we know that the banner was for the purpose of gathering Israel. So then, why in another place in Isaiah 11 is the banner now for the Gentiles? doesn't make sense. The banner was for the nations, yes. That makes perfect sense. But the banner was going out for a specific purpose. Right? It wasn't just a, a useless banner. It wasn't just for any old buddy, any old Joe Schmo from Idaho. It was for a purpose. And that purpose was for Israel. So look at Isaiah 49 and what it says. It says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the people. Same standard, right? Same standard as Isaiah 11. We saw that standard before. They shall bring, here's Isaiah 49. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Check this out. Kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down with their faces to the earth before you and lick up the dust of your feet. So here's back to Isaiah 49 to see the symmetry with Isaiah 11. He's setting up a standard or, you know, a call for, to the people, to the nations, it says. He's setting up a call to the people or to the peoples, it says, plural. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Gee, that sounds like hard work, right? Who are these ones that they're carrying? They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Damn, that's pretty harsh. So these peoples that God was setting up a sign for or, or setting a call out to, 
We're going to carry these individuals back and lick up the dust of their feet. These were pretty special individuals to this God, obviously. Yes, these are Israelites. This is the whole point. So again, what did I just do? Well, I linked Isaiah 49 to Isaiah 11 to show that both places are speaking of a calling out to the nations. A banner or a light is going out to the nations, and both places speak of the purpose of that banner being Israel, gathering Israel, gathering Israel. Isaiah 11 says, bringing the outcasts of Israel from the four corners of the earth. Isaiah 49 talks about it a little differently and says that they will carry you on their shoulders and lick up the dust of your feet. But they're both speaking of a banner going out to the nations for the purpose of gathering Israel, folks. So next time someone uses the trigger passage or the trigger word Gentile in Isaiah 49 to try to argue you, I would walk them right over to Isaiah 11 and just show them Isaiah 11 and how it's the exact same account, exact same thing going on. But Isaiah 11 is a bit more clear with why, why it's going on and who is being redeemed. But of course, if we look before and after in Isaiah 49, we can find more details and clues that this is all about Israel as well. I didn't really go into those today, but if you want to read it, you can. You can clearly see that God was always saving his people, Jacob, and that why would this be any different, especially since Jacob was out in the nations in fulfillment of many predictions and promises. And so I hope you learned a little bit today, and I hope that the word goy makes a little more sense. Almost 70% of the time, the Bible translates the word goy as nation or nations. So only 30% of the time, it chooses to translate it as Gentile. And that's a terrible word because it gives people the idea that it's something different than nations. Gentile and nations is the same word. It's goy. Okay? And it means nation, simply. That's it. So if salvation was going to the Gentiles... The same exact thing could be said that salvation was going to the nations. And if the Israelites were out in the nations and they were predicted to be saved and God was predicting to have mercy on them and find them and bring them back, well then we know why salvation was going to the nations now, don't we? And that's the whole point of the gospel now, isn't it? They took it to the nations, they spread it far and wide. It was a mission to gather the elect from the four winds of the earth, said Jesus before his coming. And that's precisely what's taking place as Paul and the others journey to places such as the islands of the sea to find the sheep of Israel. Folks, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was a good one. If you liked it, give it a like, a ruski. If not, you know what to do. And we'll catch you on that flip side. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.